O great spirit. Namaste. Bless us with thy presence. In all of thy names and all of thy forms, the past, the present, the future, bless us with thy presence. O infinite Lord of stillness, bless us with thy presence. In all of thy names and all of thy forms, the past, the present, the future, bless us with thy presence. Pour forth thy blessings upon us. Most beloved Lord of life, in all of thy names, thy forms, the past, the present, the future, bless us with thy presence. Most beloved ancestors of our bloodlines, share thy goodness with us. Share thy wisdom with us. That our karma and thy karma may be softened. O ye powers that be, in all realms, thy helpers in all realms, pour forth thy blessings upon us at this moment. Bless us with thy presence. May we see thee. May we feel thy presence. Bless us with thy presence. Using the breath within the body, the prana that vivifies every cell of your being. Sup and sip inward moving that pranic energy from the limbs to the trunk. Again, sipping and supping, supping upon the breath. Move the breath from the trunk to the spinal column. And now using again the wings of your breath, move the energy, the prana from the base of the spine to the sun center. And move that pranic energy out in front of you, that light that thou art. Sweep around thy body, moving to the left. Encase your entire being in golden light. Oh. 
the sacred sound ascend upward as high as you are able, following the sound, the vibration. to your high place. going, calling to you. beckoning you to walk, to ascend upward. The Om calls your name. You walk, ascending further, walking through a beautiful meadow, the Om echoing. See a beautiful yellow bird in front of you singing. Oh. You see the beautiful butterfly flitting in front of you singing. It's scampering in front of you, inviting you, follow, 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 ascend. As you walk through the meadow, ascending upward, ascending higher and higher. 
entering into the forest, hearing the birds. The trees echoing back. Tiny bluebells peeking through the grass, through the ground. The creek bubbling next to you. light dappling through the trees, dancing and leading you upon the path. By the very ground upon which you are treading, upon which your feet are held, your legs are held, is singing to you. As you ascend, the path opens and you are greeted in a beautiful, sacred place surrounded by trees, all singing to you. The grove is filled with the sound of Om calling to you, filling you, filling you, drawing you closer, ascending further. Coming to the beautiful shrine in front of you. Oh, this sacred, precious place. Filled. The sound reverberating. Filling you. inviting you to enter and you see the most beautiful colors and sound 
radiating forth, calling you. You are welcome. Here you are welcome. Here you are accepted. Here you are whole. Enter into this shrine, this beautiful place for you. And walking across the threshold, you enter in to this beautiful, spacious, sacred shrine filled with all, filled with the color that you need at this moment, the vibrant colors which you need. Om, chanting, calling you. Om. And walking through, you come closer and closer and closer to the brilliant light. As you walk into the shrine, you ascend further upward. You see the light drawn to the light. You ascend. See in front of you the pool of light. Stop here a moment. As you step into the light, let go for a moment. Commit to yourself that you will let go of all that you do not need, all of the thought forms you do not need, all of the emotions you do not need. You will let go and be filled. Let go and be filled. Step into the pool of light and feel the old weariness washing away. Walk towards this beautiful waterfall of light that you see in front of you. Knowing as you enter this light, you will be vivified, healed, lifted. Mm.
standing under the waterfall, feel the gold and brilliant colors pouring down upon your crown center. Letting go, washing away. Filling your entire being with the light. Radiating forth the own which thou art. Let the water of light fill every cell of your being. Gently, surely, performing its dharma, letting go, releasing the heavy karmas. As the karma is released, your body begins to ascend a little bit on its own. And when you are ready, walk from the waterfall of light. Walk through the pool of light, feeling your body lifted, filled with the light, filled with the own. Walking through the pool, feel your being covered, filled with vitality. Ananda, Ananda, Ananda. Oh. The Aum filling every cell of your being. Radiating at your sun center. Aum. Walk forth from this sacred place filled with light, filled with radiant vitality. Following the Aum. As you return to the high place, your meditation place in the high realm,
O oh, infinite Lord of stillness, O oh, infinite Lord of life in all of thy names, all of thy forms, pour forth thy blessings upon us at this moment. Fill us, fill us with thy presence, fill us with thy blessings, that we might see you, that we might see thine eyes, that we might hear thy voice, that we might know thee in every form of life, in every form of life. Namaste. Welcome. Welcome to my heart. Welcome to our Sunday Sangha. The infinite Lord of stillness, the Lord of life, has shared its presence with us. the great Om, the sound of the universe breathing has shared its presence with us. The Mandukya Upanishad most beautifully says, attune your eyes to me. Attune your attention to me, not moi, but the sun center. That at the moment that you leave the incarnation, you attune to me in the name of Om, in the awareness of Om, in the blessing of Om. The Om that lives within each one of us, the Om that thou art, the Om that thou see, the Om that you breathe with every breath that you take. It is only needed to remember this one thing, the Om. Just remember the Om. Nothing else is needed. You walk through the earth. And these days, it's been a little challenging for many, many, many people. We see this, the Saturn and the Mars coming up to the Saturn. You know, a hit, a swing. We see them in the sky. In two days, they are right kissing each other. Ah, here we are, you know. So what does it mean? No, don't run ahead and bump your head against the wall. How many times do you need to bump your head against the wall before you see that the wall isn't going to give way to you? Or bump your head against the brick even more? appropriate? No. Uh, even in the brick is the ohm. 
Even in the wall is the Aum. Even in the confinement or the limitations of your life as you perceive them is the Aum. But what do we need to do? What do you need to do, you and I? What's necessary? Oh. How about that for just a moment? And you can see and hear the Aum. Devotion. Devotion. Devotion to what? Devotion to your chosen form of the divine. To your God, if you will. To your Ishtadevata, as we say in yoga. Your chosen form of the divine. Of all the forms of life, of all the forms that your creative mind can attune to, there's one that is more precious to you than any other. Tune to that. Become intimate with it. Call it by name. But know that in all the forms of life, all forms, the Om lives in this, yeah, this beautiful goblet. And the water that is within it. In the form of the harp, the Om lives. In the form of even these glasses, the Om lives. In all manifest and unmanifest reality, the Om is. All manifest and unmanifest reality come forth, project forth from the Om and thus are contained within the Om. But what's the problem? What's the problem that we have? Well, not too hard to see. We forget. We forget. You and I, we forget. We allow the doubts of others to make their imprints upon our mind. Once upon a time, there was a very young Swami, a female, a little girl, a young girl who was a Swami. And she had a dream one night. And in her dream, a divine came to her and said, Swamiji, tomorrow I am going to come and visit. I've heard your prayers. Tomorrow I will come and visit. She had been very devout for years and years and years and years, praying, may I see your face? May I see your eyes? May I see your face? And so when this dream came, she was very, wow. My Lord is coming to my house tomorrow. How wonderful. She woke up extra early and began to clean. Oh, you know, she had to clean her temple, you know, had to wash her hair, you know, brush her teeth, clean her temple. And then she went to the physical building and she picked up the dead flowers and swept and cleaned, and cleaned the cobwebs and shined everything extra, chanting, Oh, oh. Sunrise comes and she's all finished. Oh. She goes to the temple and she's meditating. Oh. Her Lord hasn't shown up. Eight o'clock comes breakfast. 
fellow Swami is coming in and she says very excitedly, you know, they said, well, it looks pretty good here today. You know, what happened? You changed the Jyoti light, you scrubbed everything, the floor is clean, all the prasad offerings are cleaned and put away. The Lord is going to come today. The Lord is going to come today. <laughs> really? <laughs> he told you he's going to come today? The Lord told you he's going to come today? Yes. The Lord came to me last night and said he was going to come today. <laughs> they all started laughing. Oh, my goodness. Look at that. Look at her. She's so foolish. The Lord is going to come to her. Hmm. High noon comes. She has a special meal prepared in case the Lord comes for lunch. She waits. Oh, no, no. The Lord wasn't there. So she gives the meal to people who came to the temple. And all the people who heard the Lord was going to come, ah, well, they kept making fun of her. So what time is the Lord coming today? They said. What time will he be here? And as she's passing her prasad out, the prasad for the Lord, she comes to a very, very, very old, 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 old man. He's hunched over. His glasses are crooked. Had to take his glasses off, actually. All right, he's hunched over. And she says, Namaste, G. Please take the prasad that I made for the Lord. For I know he would want you to have it. Thank you, my dear. Kind of gave her a wink. Thank you. Thank you. She doesn't notice. Walks through the day. She's singing. Oh. And no matter what people say, she's singing all. Oh, she's so happy. The Lord is going to come. He promised he would come and be with her. So the sun moves through the sky. And the fellow swamis, they weren't so nice. And some of the other people at the temple, they weren't so nice. They started really heckling her. What do you mean the Lord's going to come and visit you? Well... Looks like he's not coming today. Three o'clock, not here yet. And you've been here since before sunrise. When's he coming? And as she walks through the temple, chanting and singing, she comes upon three old, 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 old women. Swami G, Swami G, Swami G. They whisper. She comes. Ah. Yes, Auntie, how may I help you? How may I help you? Yes, G, she says to them. Don't worry. Don't worry. The Lord is here. Don't worry. Don't listen to them. Do not let your head be filled with doubts. We know the Lord is here. The Lord is here. Oh. Chanted Brahma. Oh. Chanted Vishnu. chanted Shiva, who had come in the form of these little ladies to help her. 
She smiled and thank you, thanked them. They seemed awfully familiar, but she wasn't sure who they were. A day goes by, sunset comes. Where's her Lord? By this time, everybody's ready to leave the temple. They leave the temple. She's there with just the Jyoti light. She and the Jyoti light, and she's chanting. Oh. Now I have to tell you, she was a little discouraged by this point and the doubts crept up in her mind. The doubts crept and crept and crept and crept. What if they're right? What if they're right? What if they're right? What if the Lord isn't here? What if the Lord isn't coming? What if the Lord will not bless me? What if I'm not worthy? But she had been practicing. She had devotion. She kept a tuning and lifting up, 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 up. And no matter what anybody said, she kept saying, oh, Is that somebody knocking at the door? Is somebody knocking at the door? Is somebody knocking at the door? She thinks. She opens her eyes and slowly stands up to open the door. She opens the door. In her meditation, she has opened the door and the light is brilliant. It comes brilliantly and she opens her mind's eye. And there, right next to her, Shining upon her are the eyes of her Lord. And as she gazes upon the Lord, her Lord, the infinite universes, she can see the universes, the time and space all gone. the infinity and she hears And like we would, she says, my Lord, I'm so happy you came. I'm so happy. Thank you. Thank you for coming. I'm so happy. And she starts to whisper because the temple is empty. There's no one but her and the Lord. My Lord, why did you take so long to get here? Why did you take so long? Everybody was making fun of me. Every, and she starts to get very upset. Everybody was making fun of me. They were telling me you weren't coming. And the Lord looks at her and he says, My dear, my dear, most beloved, it is because of your devotion, your practice, you're turning to me. You're turning to me, to me at the sun center. Your attunement to me, it is because of your devotion that I came. All of these others who were doubting, I couldn't come in their presence. 
for they were filled with doubt. They were filled with emotions of anger, of hatred. They were filled with emotions of pulling down other people. Did you see those three in the center, the side, those three people who told you, the old women who told you that I was here, that I was here? Why, I was in them. That was Brahma, Vishnu, and Shiva. Myself in the form of the creator, the sustainer, and the dissolver. You were kind to them. You were kind to me. And so I say to you, at this moment, he said, it said, the divine said in all of its glory, she said, it said, he said, I bring you my blessings. I give unto you at this moment my blessings. Remember me. Remember the Om. Call upon me by day, call upon me by night. Remember. Remember the own. I will be with you, the Lord said to her, now and at the moment that you leave and take this last breath, the moment of this last breath in this incarnation, I will lead you along the path to the new life, just as I support you and fill you and heal you and help you in this life, I will lead you to the next. And so what do we know? So easy, so easy. The Om is within everything. We must, though, gather our strength, gather our devotion, gather our commitment to turn and live our lives. You need to live your life making your own choices, recognizing that your choice, your spiritual path, it's not for everyone. Let go of the dividing nature of the emotions of the mind and let go of that desire of the mind to put others down. Don't trample on other people's dreams. If they tell you the Lord is going to come to the temple, support their dream as best as is aligned with you. Silence turning inward to your Lord can say, you know, help them, let them have that which they need, let them have that which they want. And so today, really, we've been immeasurably blessed by the Yoga City, the lights of Kriya that are with us, the divine that are with us today, pouring forth their blessings upon each of us. But what did the Swamiji learn? And what is to be taken for you and I? Let not the thoughts of others plant the seed of doubt in your mind. Stand firm, stand strong in your practice, in your devotion. Lift, ascend above the fighting, the arguing, the disagreements, the opposition. Ascend to the heart center and then ascend to the sun center. And you ascend to the heart center by looking, oh yes, isn't that flower beautiful? Isn't it wonderful to see the way that this chair holds my body and keeps it comfortable? 
Isn't it wonderful the way that these clothes, thank you, that they keep the body warm or cool. Look at the beautiful bird. Look at the beautiful flower here. Ah, and that tree, that magnificent tree, and the loam of the earth that we are walking upon, and the bunny that's scampering over the backyard, and the squirrels of all their sizes, and the sidewalk that keeps your feet clean. Whatever it is that you see, you know, you have a roof over your head. Yes, this is wonderful. Whatever you can be grateful for, your ability to read, to write, to communicate, become grateful. See each form of life that you see. Stop and look at its beauty. And you get up in the morning, get out of your bed, be grateful for your feet, for your legs. Each moment, carry this thread, this sutra of the beauty of life, of the love that you can share with others and then lift it. So you have to lift from this everyday awareness of criticism of running, ranting, raving and lift it to the heart and then lift to the sun center. And the lesson of today is that we lift by our devotion. Devotion to what? Devotion to your music, to your poetry, Devotion to serving your family. Devotion to cooking good meals, healthy meals for your family. Devotion to your meditation practice. Devotion to your happiness. To bringing ever greater joy into life by your presence, by your kindness, your compassion. And when you stop and you stumble, and something doesn't go quite the way that you were hoping, stand up and just begin again. For one of the most beautiful things that my guru said is it doesn't matter how many times you fall it matters how many times you stand up after you've fallen and so if you stumble because there's funny thoughts in your mind angry thoughts irritated thoughts if you say something unkind if you stumble in some any part of your life at all just get up again and keep walking, and all will be well. Namaste. Namaskar. I thank you for the blessing of your presence. And I see that, uh, I see that we have uh, Vanaposananda, happy birthday, happy solar return. I'm glad to see you here today. So, Shanti, deepest blessings to all of you. And again, thank you for the blessings of your presence. <laughs>